uh, looking at the peghead veneer for the 335 base build. And uh, what's, what I want to do is I'm going to cut this white section out here and uh, use that as the truss rod access. So I've already got these holes drilled, uh, which match the, uh, the holes for the tuners. So the reason I went ahead and got them drilled through the, the veneer is that when I cut this, this arrow or point spear shape out, uh, this is not going to have any, any real structure up here. I want to make sure that when I glue this to the peg head that it will retain its original uh, relationship here side to side. So with uh, pins through the holes, tuner holes, I should be able to do that. So I'm going to uh, get set up and, and cut this out. All right, here we go. Let me, uh, let me say that my cuts are to here and I can only go that deep with this uh, on the angle. I can go that deep. So I thought maybe I could turn the blade, but it's, I can't turn the blade in this, uh, this particular saw. So I thought I'd use my coping saw, but the coping saw blade I have is just way, way too coarse. Um, plenty of depth of cut, but too coarse. So I think what I'm going to have to do is use a, an X-Acto blade. And uh, I'm going to move that down to the table here. And uh, get some other stuff out of the way. And move over to here. So I, I don't like cutting it with an X-Acto blade. Uh, the, the plus side here is that you, you, might, you might be able to tell that these aren't extremely straight right here toward the end because I was having to angle my saw and it was, I, I couldn't see it. Uh, but I'm going to finish that since this is about a half inch to five eighths longer than it needs to be. Uh, all I have to do is file, straighten up the edge of the, we'll call it the mortise and then this white piece being the tenon then I can shave the tenon until it fits perfectly and it can go in deeper and then I'll cut it all, all at the same place. So I have, because it's angled, I have room to make an adjustment there, uh, much like a, a heel graft. So, or exactly like a heel graft. Trying to leave all of the dark and uh, I wish it had followed it all the way down. I'm not sure you can see it, but right against the edge of the white, there's actually a darker stripe of grain that ran pretty much down to about this point, and then you don't really see it past there. But um, I wish it had gone all the way. It's a nice little parallel line going on there. Uh, I'm also not sure, because I can't look at what I'm looking at and look up at the camera. My head just ends up in the way the whole time, I'm sorry. Again, this is one of those times you don't you don't press down really hard on the knife. You just 
pretty much skate on the on the path you want because if you bear down too hard at this point all you're going to end up doing is uh is following a grain line you don't want to follow and of course every time you do it you go a little give it a little more pressure And then I just totally wandered off. So do as I say, not as I do. You can't seem to cut the same line twice. And I'm glad I have room to clean this up. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Uh huh. I'm going to put a piece of tape across the end here on both the front and the back just so that I don't uh, accidentally get a split on this. I'd, I could glue it together, but I'd rather not. It's part of the reason I used the veneer was uh, to reinforce this because it had already uh, cracked a little bit. Uh, and then gluing the veneer on, re-glued that little bit of a crack. All right, this is a pretty fat X-Acto blade. I wanted it because I thought it would be sturdier for getting to a point here, but I'm... I want to be able to slice all the way through that, so I'm going to go grab my other one with the number 11 in it. Um, this, this little frail point here presents a problem. Um, it just seems like once that's out, if somebody's taking that out to adjust the truss rod, they have to be very careful with that point. Hopefully they will be, but just something I'm thinking of as I'm going here. I've debated uh, binding the edge of that with something, uh, possibly another piece of veneer, like the red veneer. But no matter what I do, it has to come to a very sharp point somewhere along the line. I debated doing this only so far up, but I just, you know, there wasn't any sort of a natural grain line or anything that I could use as a, as a point to, to change it out. And I just didn't want to have a piece go up so far and then just, you know, turn it into a point or just go so far up and, and you know, I could have possibly done a little radius or something there. And that might not have been such a bad thing, but I just really didn't want to disturb this line and just being, you know, Kind of a homogenous thing there. Uh, I'm not seeing any any lines on the back yet poking through, so I haven't gotten gotten very far. Well, I haven't gotten through. I don't know how far I've gotten. All right. Well, I'm going to just carry on with this. It's got to happen eventually. It's just fascinating TV, I know. So I got the wedge cut out. I'm going to go ahead and file up in here and get uh, get that straightened out as much as possible and take a, a popsicle stick with uh, sandpaper on it and you know file this way so that I can kind of just get a, a straighter line going but this is the basic idea and uh, Having razor bladed that out of there, I doubt if you'd be able to see it in the camera, but 
I have a bit of a undercut on this side and a little bit of an overcut on this side just because of the way I hold the blade, you know, right-handed. Uh, just tend to do that. Didn't look like it, I was being careful. Uh, but just... Uh, All right, so this is the uh, truss rod nut cover um, for the base. And I got you zoomed in pretty good here on a really short little tripod. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just going to check and see how sharp my chisel is and if I need to sharpen it at all before I start this. And it mostly just tore that, so yeah. And that's on the other end that still gets trimmed off. So I'm going to go sharpen my chisel um, because that would be a disaster on the other end. I'm gonna I'm gonna miter these pieces out and put my little end piece of veneer on there. Um, so yeah, I want this to run with the grain. So I'm just gonna split a piece of this off, maybe. It's a little wiggly. I'm gonna use a bigger, bigger chisel. Back in that same notch. Well, come on. There we go. Well, I just ripped it. I guess that goes along with the grain then. Yep. This is about yay thick. That's actually not too far off. Thickness wise. Going to recess this uh, down into the pig head. And I like still haven't decided whether I'm going to use magnets or uh, or just pop a couple of screws in the thing. We'll see. All right, now if I can manage to keep my head out of your view and still see what I'm doing here. And you might ask, why is he why is he mitering these things? when he could just chop them off and put a piece across there it's gonna be too too hard to see anyway and i actually think that oh man dull chisel well he may just have to crap This uh, veneer is really just split out. Time for some super glue patching and moving on to something else while that dries because that did not work out. Let's see if I can screw the other side up this good. I wasn't even trying to get up close. I was just trying to cut off some of the excess. Yeah, if I saw with it, it works a little better. But 